If you're looking for a headset that will work wirelessly with your PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC, and even mobile phones, then the Razer Barracuda X could be an excellent value choice that won't leave you looking to sell a kidney or starving because you had to skip meals just to buy a decent headset. Hi, what's up everybody? I'm Edward. In today's video, I'll first go over the specifications of this wireless headset while sharing with you my initial impressions and then go over the key features from my usage experience of the Razer Barracuda X that makes me feel that it is so worth this $100 price tag. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to stay updated and let's listen to the details. When Razer announced the Razer Barracuda X, I couldn't believe the price tag that came with it, especially given the number of features that came with it and how much it resembles Razer's more premium active noise cancelling, the Razer Opus. For $100, I was surprised at the amount of accessories that came included with the headset, as it is not too Razer-like to include so many cables for a product in this price range. Included along with the headset, there are a total of three Speedflex cables one 5 feet long male USB-A to male USB-C cable for charging your headset, one 4.3 long 3.5mm jack cable for using in wired mode with the Xboxes, one male USB-A to female USB-C cable that measures at 5 feet for extending and connecting the oddly wide-shaped USB-C wireless dongle, and a unidirectional detachable hyper-clear cardioid microphone. My initial impressions of Razer's Barracuda X was that the headset didn't feel as cheap as I was expecting. The matte back plastic used for the frame wasn't particularly thick or dense, so it doesn't feel as sturdy as the Backshark V2 Pro I reviewed a little while earlier, but it definitely felt stronger than my Mano Wire headset. After doing a slight twist test, with the amount of flex the plastic shows and no parts breaking off, my guess is that the thinner plastic material was probably intentional to keep the overall weight of the headset further light at 250 grams. As for the design of the Razer Barracuda X, I'm glad that Razer has used a low profile, clean and stealthy design, making it perfectly fine to use it in the public, especially since the, this headset's design, in my opinion, is quite suitable for gamers on the go. The ear cups are slightly angled to match the natural angles of our ears, which adds to the comfort factor, but strangely, the ear cups fold 90 degrees out or is it in? Making the inside of the ear cups face up when you rest them on your neck so that they can catch your dandruffs. Taking a look at the ear cups, they feature memory foams that are covered with Razer's flow knit fabric that allows more airflow as opposed to leatherette and adds a slightly more premium feel to the headset overall. Though the in ear padding feels very thin and could also be a problem if the ear cups are going to be pressed against my ears during extended use. The headband itself is reinforced with a metal band inside, and the bottom side is padded with soft foam and unfortunately covered with a slightly thin vinyl that will most likely start peeling within a year or so. I wonder why Razer couldn't just use flow knit fabric here too. Now, for the controls, similar to the Blackshark V2 headsets, they are located on the ear cup, left ear cup, and each button have a different signature making it easy to determine which buttons you are pressing. There's a 3.5mm port for connecting the microphone, USB-C charging port, another 35 input port for using the Barracuda X in wired mode, a power indicator LED, a power button that also functions as media control when used with an Android phone, a volume dial, and a mute microphone button. Inside the ear cups, Razer has gone with their 40mm Triforce drivers to accurately replicate high, mid, and low audio frequencies but I personally would prefer it more if Razer used the 50mm Triforce drivers found in the Backshark V2 Pros. This is because I personally feel that the highs and mids on the 40mm drivers are not as crisp and also has a smaller sound stage compared to the 50mm ones when it comes to media consumption. But despite that, the key selling point of the Razer Barracuda X is that it can simply work wirelessly plug and play style across multiple platforms. The headset works with any device that comes with a USB-C port. It works with the Nintendo Switch docked and undocked, PlayStation 4 and 5, PC and laptops, and also Android phones with a USB-C port. The headset does not rely on Razer's hyperspeed wireless technology, but instead connects to the dongle wirelessly over the 2.4 GHz band, which results in a slightly shorter connection range compared to hyperspeed. Though, during my 5 months of use, 
I did not ex experience any interference or audio delay, so that is a good thing. As for the microphone, the audio quality of your voice picked up by this cardioid microphone has improved quite a lot compared to most of Razer's previous headsets. It is very clear and almost natural and performs pretty decently in suppressing most further away background noise to some extent. However, due to the lack of software support, you will not be able to tune and adjust this how you sound. So during these past five months, what I really enjoyed about the Bar Barracuda X is its lightweight and how comfortable it was to wear over extended sessions. The clamping pressure is just right for my large head, so it was comfortable both when I have my glasses on and off. Also, my initial concern of the thin in-ear ear pads did not pose an issue, or at least not yet, due to the sufficient padding thickness on the ear cups. Though, over time, as the foam padding becomes thinner, it might become a problem then. We'll see. As for the advertised versatility, in my opinion, it is more of a bonus feature, but a great one as now Razer has something that can match the versatility of the SteelSeries Arctis One and the ROG Strix Go Wireless headsets. I personally find that the headset works best on PC, but I had no issues using this headset wirelessly while gaming on consoles. Though, I did find that the volume was a little on the low side while using it with Android phones making it sometimes not loud enough to drown out external noises when used outdoors. The only minor issue I ran into when testing the Barracuda X on multiple platforms was finding a USB-C port that had enough clearance to fit the extra wide dongle. And because of this design, I will always need to bring along the USB extension cable for the dongle or else I will find myself not being able to plug in the dongle on laptops without first unplugging another port, which I find inconvenient. And another thing that I didn't like about Razer Barracuda X is how easily the plastic materials get scuffed and scratched. Since the Barracuda X doesn't come with a carrying pouch, if you plan to bring this headset around with you, then I recommend that you should also invest in a headset carrying pouch so that you can protect it from scratches and also not risk losing the wireless dongle as there's no place to store it on the headset. But other than these two minor nitpicks, the battery life is pretty great, lasting around 20 hours from a full charge, which was enough to get me through a week of using it for Microsoft team meetings in the office, and then some gaming done on the Nintendo Switch without needing a charge. Though, there is no way to check the battery life, so if you're about to go on a long trip, just charge it up in case the night before, just to be sure. So that's pretty much it for what I have to share with you about the Razer Barracuda X wireless headset. At $100, this is easy to recommend if you currently do not own a wireless gaming headset as it is very versatile and kidney friendly. Though if Razer had included the Bluetooth connectivity option, I would definitely be seeing myself preaching this headset to everyone looking for a budget wireless gaming headset as it would be the perfect candidate. Alright, thank you as always for watching. If you guys have any questions about the Barracuda X, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, consider hitting that like button as it will really, really, really help this channel out a lot. And I'll see you again in the next video.